On this episode of Imagine, Capture, Inspire, we're going to do things just a little bit different. It's not really a tip video, but it's more about my journey and where I started with photography. And this all happened back in 2007 when I had a critical surfing accident when I was just after I was 21. So my friend and I, Luke, we went down to Coolangatta to surf a cyclone swell that had came through and created really great waves down at, on Superbank, which is from Coolangatta, sorry, from Snapper Rocks down to Kira. So we're down there, we're having a surf, and it's about two or three hours into the surf, and we got I got some really great waves. We were having a good time, and I started to get past just near North Kira there was another uh, surfer just up from me. Now he didn't take the wave and I decided I'll take it and this wave unfortunately picked me up, slammed me over the falls and slammed me into the sand tailbone first. So I got hit with the uh, you know the force of the sand and at that point in time I actually blacked out for a split second or two or what felt like a split second. I found that I was a little bit shaken and I had this immense pain in the back of my body but my, my body was also filled with adrenaline. I was trying to get onto my board as another set wave was coming by and unfortunately I just couldn't move my legs, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't get on my board, I tried to get on there and it just turned me over like um, you know, in a washing machine. I'm just getting somersaulted in the water. So wave after wave comes and I'm getting pretty tired at this point to the point where I actually thought to myself, um, you know, this is where I'm, I'm probably going to die. I, had, I was losing energy, I couldn't breathe very well and the pain was just getting worse and worse. Luckily though, um, at this point in time, that same surfer that was about 40 meters away from me that didn't take the wave that I got. Luckily he did see me, he was coming in on the whitewash and here I was raising my hand and I was trying to scream but I was hit so hard that I actually couldn't put any air or any sound into my vocal cords. And so I was trying to scream, nothing was coming out and it was extremely frustrating but luckily he saw how panicked I was, waving my hand back and forth trying to get his attention and he stopped and he also struggled to get from through the whitewash to me and finally when he did we try, he tried to get me on my board and help catch the wave in but unfortunately I just couldn't move my legs at all and every single wave that would come through I just get tossed and turned over. Luckily he was there he ended up getting me to the shallow water and I tried to stand up but unfortunately I just I couldn't move my legs at all. So he actually put me on the board and dragged me all the way up the beach. Oh well, as far as he could and then he went off to go get some help. In the meantime some council workers had saw what happened and they called the ambulance and it was at this point in time that they actually decided let's send in a helicopter and they would you send in the helicopter from uh, Care Flight at the time, which is now called Life Flight. They send that down, um, and you can see some footage here of me being airlifted off the beach. So here I was being looked at. They gave me the green whistle, which started to take an edge off on all the pain as all the adrenaline started to run out. So I get airlifted from Kira Beach, and they fly me to the PA hospital where they've got a good spinal unit and here I was for several days and the diagnosis was I actually fractured I actually fractured my lumbar my L3 in three different places and that what they were going to do would put in about six pins and two rods to brace it between my L5 and L4 sorry L5 and I think it's L2 so why does this all matter? So what actually happened was 
during my recovery, I had about 12 months of time off. I couldn't go swimming, I didn't have work, I was unable to earn any income, and I was still living at home with my parents, luckily. And so during this time, I, uh, I was going to a lot of aqua aerobics, and um, <laughs> because that was a lot less uh, in a lot less impact on the body and we were I actually met this one other guy that had a very similar accident to me that was probably 12 months down the track compared to where I was and I was speaking with him and he was really struggling he he was overweight he was very depressed he said he struggled to get out of bed every morning um, he was in a world of pain and the pain medication wasn't doing him much good and it was at that moment that I realized that, you know, this, this is more than just a physical injury. This is going to be a mental injury as well, or a, a trial at least. It's going to really test the strength of my mentality. And so after that, I really decided, well, I don't want this injury or, or change in my life to really take a hold of me and affect my mental condition so much that I uh, end up doing nothing. And so what I decided to do was list out a few things that I really wanted to achieve or wanted to achieve but have never had the time. And so for me, I actually went to do um, learn how to play the guitar, learn to draw or photography. That were the top three things that I wanted to do. Always wanted to do something creative. Um, but during my younger years, it was always about sport or um, you know other things like that. It wasn't necessarily about something creative. So I decided let's pick up a camera and start to learn everything about aperture, ISO, shutter speed, and how a camera works. I went to the library at that point, which was, uh, you know, we did have the internet back then, but I guess there wasn't as many tutorials or as much information out there online as there was at the library. So I ended up getting books and reading up on a lot of different techniques, reading up on different styles and also just different art errors in, um, in history. You know, I, I ended up buying my first camera around Christmas time. It was almost a Christmas gift to myself and it was something that I really wanted to do. It was, it, it was something that would keep me distracted and also keep me happy. And as my physio got better and things were looking a lot better, my friends would start taking me down to the beach. And luckily I did have a lot of support from friends and family and from you know, everyone around me that did support me. And so I'd go down, I'd take photos of my friends surfing and I'd be constantly looking at how I can make my photos better. So it was at this point where you know, it was about 12 months before I got back in the water and as I did get back in the water, I had my first wave, it was about two foot and I was sore for about three weeks later because of all the muscles in the back. It, it completely changed the way I moved. And so from there, things got progressively got a lot better and I could start swimming in the pool and I was a lot more fit and able to do what I love to do. And so I decided, well, at this point, let's, why not buy a water housing? So I bought a water housing for my camera. It cost me about 2,500 uh, US dollars. And I told my friends at the time, so many people were thinking, geez, why are you spending this sort of money on a, a water housing for your camera and all this camera gear? You're crazy, you know? They just didn't see, have the same vision that I had. But I had this vision of some underwater photographs that I really wanted to capture of my friends bodyboarding and surfing. And then a couple of years later, luckily I did pursue that because I ended up entering some photographs, which I'll put up on screen now, entered them into Digital Camera World Photographer of the Year in 2010. And after entering that, I actually took away and won the overall competition and also the action category. And for me, that was more than just it was more than just, um, you know, winning a competition. It was sort of a turning point for me to realize that I can trust my decisions and I can make good decisions and to really go with what I'm passionate about. 
it's sort of that little bit of intuition. You know, I, I know it's happened a few times over my life where I've actually gone, you, you know what, this is what I need to do and this is what I should be doing. And so that's probably the one tip that I would actually give to you whilst you're watching this and if you've made it this far is to listen to that intuition that you have and if you're really passionate about something, don't listen to anyone else. Just follow your dreams, follow your inner compass and hopefully this will lead you to success. So this has been another episode of Imagine, Capture, Inspire. I hope you enjoyed my story. Please comment below if this has uh, had a great effect on you or has inspired you. I really hope it does. Lastly, make sure you subscribe, comment, like, do all those things. This has been another episode of Imagine, Capture, Inspire. I will see you on episode six. Stay safe. Chat to you soon. Welcome to episode... Ah, oh, f*** me, what episode we're up to. A photography accident. Chat. F***ing hell. Welcome to another episode of Imagine, Capture, and Ins... All right, welcome that.